Hello and welcome to this lecture on philosophical perspectives on child rearing and parenting. It's the second lecture on philosophy and education policy as part of the Level C Core 2 curriculum. The lecture was prepared by um, Naomi Hodgson and she was here and I'm um, presenting it. Um, in her place. So parenting policy consists of um, texts of discourse and instruments. Um, uh, texts can include um, books on the on the topic of parenting policy. Um, it, discourse can include the kinds of things that parents themselves think and say, and other people than parents think and say of parents and of the job of having um, children and raising them. And instruments can include um, various levers that different organisations, including the government, can use to uh, have effects. Um, say laws are instruments for um, bringing about Effects. Um, so parenting has become a focus for policymakers, and research has shown the developmental importance of the first three years of life. Social problems and poor outcomes uh, for children in their lives, later lives, are seen to be due to poor parenting, due to a lack of parents' knowledge of parenting and child rearing and lack of skills in order to be able to do these jobs well. Um, and so some people think, look, these are just knowledge and skill deficits, but these are learnable things. And so what this means is it's a learning problem and education can help solve it. Um, So the thought is that parents need to be educated about how to raise their children. And in order to do this, I mean, one thing you might need to do is um, in some way surveil parenting to watch it happen, watch child rearing, to watch um, the way parents treat their children. Um, but you also need some kind of curriculum, you need something to teach um, people so that their surveilled behaviour becomes better. I mean, you might not need surveillance, you could just do education, but um, a government might think that it can more effectively um, police and govern if it combines um, surveillance and um, you know, policy advice and um, parenting classes or the like. But um, government is not the only actor in this a context. There are all sorts of authors of books and um, advice and guidance, you know, think tanks and researchers that um, have ideas about how parenting can go awry or how it can be done better, what, what good parenting looks like, what it involves, what parents need to know in order to parent well. So there's this whole network of whole array of um, actors that are of interest to researchers like Naomi Hodgson in thinking about um, parenting landscape and what shapes and the ways parents act. Um, so there's research from universities, there's policies created by government, there's discourses from sciences like psychology and neuropsychology and from things that are more like social sciences, like education and early childhood studies. There's discourses about parenting styles um, and some of these are informed by different disciplines like um, the attachment that children form and they've got secure or insecure attachment and how this is produced by different forms of parenting. 
There are all sorts of sources that talk about this, the website, blogs, books, TV shows, there are even apps you can use to um, structure your parenting and, um, you know, failures of parenting and um, will be the subject of news and other kinds of media. Um, so if you do think of parenting as a learning problem, you can um, you can ask yourself you can ask yourself um, what the curriculum would be, what would be taught, what, what needs to be known. What's this kind of ideal parent that um, teaching is going to cultivate? Um, and uh, somewhat separately from that, there's a kind of sociological question. So you might not be interested in this normative question of what good parenting looks like and um, or what kind of the legitimate range of um, permissible options parents can adopt are. You might more be interested in um, kind of sociologically tracking the conception of good parenting that seems prevalent in um, in the discourse. Um, and researchers like Naomi often draw on Foucault, Michel Foucault, um, French, uh, is it? Um, a French philosopher, um, writing in the um, 70s. And, um, he um, was interested in ways in which different forms of knowledge or different forms of thinking would become truth. Um, but for me, I, I mean, I think that if something is knowledge, if one knows a thing, then the thing that one knows is true. Um, so knowledge implies truth, just anyway. And the question is always, well, do we really know anything? Is this thing we think we know really knowledge? Is it really true? Um, but you can think of um, forms of knowledge in a different way. You can think that there are... Um, different things that are asserted and taken to be true. And you can think of those things kind of being widely accepted and becoming the basis of action in the community, irrespective of whether or not it is truth, or even if you're very skeptical about truth altogether and think, you know, really there's just um, perspectives and no, no objective truth. You can still perhaps think that there are these discourses out there. They shape the way people think and act. And then for Naomi, there's this question of what bodies of knowledge, what, what are the um, sorts of things that people are saying that um, the current discourse of parenting draws on? And there's an additional question of whether or not they draw on them appropriately or they misappropriate them. Um, Naomi wants to suggest that there's a, a shift in the culture that's taken place over recent decades um, from a normative conception of how to raise children and assumptions about whose job it is to raise children and how they are to raise children um, towards a different kind of conception of um, parenting where parenting is used as a verb and there's a set of skills and competencies um, that develop um, these are informed by kinds of expertise that are derived from psychology and neuroscience and accounts of child development. And there's this idea that parenting isn't just a, uh, a new word for an old practice, but it's a, a new practice altogether. And it's a kind of um, idealised way of behaving towards children that is informed appropriately by sciences and answers all the interesting questions about how to raise them. Um, I take it from um, Naomi's examples when she talks about a normative conception of how to raise children, she's not talking about, you know, what the true theory of how to raise children tells us. Uh, what a reasonable theory of how to raise children tells us. She's thinking more about um, um, basically an old fashioned traditional understanding that, for instance, it would be birth mothers that raise children, 
and perhaps their fathers as well, and that it would be done in the context of a heterosexual relationship and so on. Um, so for other people, um, <clears throat> or another, another interesting question is not sort of tracking shifts in social expectations, but thinking about what a reasonable conception of child rearing is and um, how to distribute the rights and responsibilities of parenting, for instance, whether there should be such a role as a parent and what kinds of duties and responsibilities and freedoms parents ought to have. Um, it's a tricky philosophical, very tricky and interesting philosophical question. That, for instance, Harry Brickhouse and Adam Swift, Matthew Clayton, and Anka Gaius and others have written on. To stick with Naomi's tracking of current discourses about educating parents, she draws attention to how um, there's a sense in which parents should seek advice from experts and should come to be experts themselves, and that parenting is a topic of expertise rather than common knowledge. Um, perhaps if we all became experts, then this expertise would no longer be expertise, but just would be common knowledge. But the thought is that there is some special knowledge out there which has not become common knowledge yet, perhaps. Um, <clears throat> the thought is that some families are at risk, but if they were better informed by these um, discourses, by this knowledge that's had by psychologists and neuropsychologists, they might be better placed to raise children. And there are different sources of um, uh, guidance and expertise on how to raise children. Um, not everyone buys into this discourse, of course, um, and um, Naomi Hodgson draws attention to um, Hurrah for Jin, which is the, um, the name of an artist who talks about her experiences as a mum and um, draws attention to things that she feels she perhaps wouldn't, shouldn't say as a mum or she might, people might take a negative attitude towards her for having this kind of attitude as a mum. And in the link um, provided here, by Ralph Jen, the, the, the artist talks about how she doesn't like it when her kid suggests that they play imaginatively. She goes, before you think I'm a horrible mum, just let hear me out. So here's, here's what it means to play with a child. The first one is that they give you a toy and it's the worst toy and they get the best toy. She doesn't hold too much stock by that. The next thing is that you don't actually get to play with them. You just have to kind of sit there in silence while they decide what, what play involves. Um, <clears throat> and just kind of be an audience to it and not really a, a participation participant to it. And this can be um, boring uh, at best. And then she says that um, it actually gives you um, insights into how messed up these children are and what, what kind of uh, children are kinds of bad insights they might have and conceptions they might have and it can it can be quite funny um her blogs and her um artistic work talking about her experiences as a, as a parent and they speak to some people's experiences of parenting but parenting is a, a kind of <clears throat> debatable topic so um, you can, <clears throat> you know, I don't think any two people have exactly the same ideas of what the rights, responsibilities and prerogatives of parents are, or what the correct or best or desirable attitudes of parents are towards their children. And so it's a good source of debate to look at these slides and think about whether or not um, this mum gets it wrong. Um, but what Naomi wants to draw attention to is the idea that um, the blog um, indicates that there is a correct way of parenting and um, they're failing to live up to it. Um, so um, today's conceptions of um, parenting 
uh, informed by psychology and neuropsychology, at least in the West. And there are books that um, psychologists and others um, develop to try and bring these bring this knowledge to bear, right? So that um, maybe you can raise your children in a better way if only you understand um, the science of brain development um, and other, other kinds of development um, better. Maybe understanding neuroplasticity and uh, pruning will be particularly helpful um, in some way. For instance, in decisions about what kind of food your children should eat or um, how concerned you should be that they're not um, uh, treating you with respect or something like this. So um, Naomi suggests that, you know, there are problems with um, the discourse as she um, illustrates it, as she understands it. She says that sociologists at the Centre of Parenting and Culture Studies at the University of Kent have developed some lines of critique. The first is that it's not true. Parental determinism isn't true. Like there's this kind of idea that how you raise your children um, directly leads to um, how your children are when they grow up and that any character faults in your children is directly attributable to the way they were raised. What is this could be called parental determinism and it's just not true. Um, they suggest that there's a normalization of the idea that parents are in need of education. Um, I mean, I mean, they they, are, they deliberately try to normalize that idea and they promote it. So it seems question begging to say that it's bad. You need to give a, an argument to say why it's bad. But it's um, a clear difference between the positions. Some people say education is useful. Others say, no, that's wrong. It's not useful. Um, but yeah, we need, we need some kind of trade of arguments rather than assertions that underpin those claims. Um, they suggest there's something wrong with neuro parenting that, that um, uh, you can really fully understand what it means to raise children by thinking of them as a kind of um, brain that needs to be shaped appropriately. It sort of misconstrues what children are. Surely they have brains, but they are not brains. Um, and it might be difficult to relate to children as children if you, are, if, if you have in the front of your mind um, the way in which um, their brain interacts with other phenomenon in you know, structuring how they behave. Um, they worry that the cultural construction of different kinds of parents is perceived to be a risk uh, a risk society. Um, and I'm not sure what that means, but it could potentially mean that um, too much cultural freedom might be bad if parenting practices don't live up to the scientized um, conception of what parenting is. Um, okay, that's one way of interpreting it. Uh, that's the correct way of interpreting it. Um, And they apparently also object to politicizing parenting and thinking of parenting as a social tool. Um, um, right, I don't, um, sometimes might think it's wrong to use people as tools. Um, on the other hand, um, I mean, you might think of teaching as a, as a tool, and schools as a tool, and a way of bringing about that um, people are educated, but you can't use them just as a tool. The people involved have to agree to being used in that way. They have to align with you know, the, the purposes you're putting them to. Um, and so this is something that we need to uh, be mindful of. Um, 
um, not using people as mere fools. So, um, Suisa said, I mean, uh, Naomi Hodgson drops says that, um, Naomi Hodgson points out that um, this is, uh, these are sociologists who are interested in these questions and she is interested in how the kinds of questions and thoughts that sociologists and philosophers might um, have are different from one another. Um, from, from my own point of view, I don't think we need to find any big difference between my sociologists and, soci and psychologists, I mean, philosophers and sociologists think. Um, um, it seems to be, if, 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 in order to make complaints about the way parents are being treated, have some kind of idea about the ways in which they should be treated, or some kind of idea about what the role of a parent is and um, what kinds of supports and protections and freedoms and rights they have. Um, but defining this um, is what I would understand to be a philosophical um, topic. But if some people want to say it is also a sociological topic or it is just a sociological topic, it seems to be a mere um, difference in the way people use words. It's an interesting set of questions and we would do well to answer them. So, um, so elaborating on this theme of thinking about how philosophers might do something distinct from sociologists, um, Naomi draws attention to the idea of parenting and wants to distinguish it from raising children and wants to find some kind of philosopher who's written about these matters and says that in the continental philosophical tradition, family is seen as a key pedagogical institution along with the church, historically, the state and the school. Uh, Schleimacher um, saw the changing of generations as the central issue of education. For him, the educational relationship is first and foremost an intergenerational relationship. And this raises the important questions. What does the older generation intend to do with the younger generation? How is the older generation to introduce the new generation to today's world? And to prepare it for the world to come. Um, one interesting thought about this is that it's no longer actually just about parents and the family, it's about a whole community, it's about a generation and another generation and it seems to socialise um, questions about child rearing across an entire generation so they have to together make decisions about how to raise the next generation. Do you think that parents have some kind of special right to um, shape the lives of their children, then you won't think this is right, that the older generation gets to decide what to do with the younger generation. You think that parents get to decide what to do with their children. Um, but again, both, um, um, but it's, you know, which conception is right is, is not given to us by nature. We need to um, consider it and, um, you know, debate arguments for and against, you know, where the locus of authority should lie, and the locus of responsibility should lie in shaping and directing um, the lives of children. Um, Naomi says that other philosophers have written about upbringing as well, including uh, Klaus Mollenhoff and uh, Hannah Arendt. And these are from the continental tradition I've already mentioned, some people from the analytic tradition in previous slides. Um, so, um, you can think of um, parenting as having been scientized in a, in a certain way. Um, and what that might mean is that um, your understanding of raising children has been shaped and informed or um, and perhaps in inappropriate ways by um, your understanding of a science, or by your understanding of professional jobs. Um, and so that you might get an encroachment of a, um, a way of looking at things um, that perverts what the 
the values of the thing really are. So um, maybe the family is not best understood as a as a kind of a job um, where a job is the kind of thing you get paid to do and you've got a well specified job description. Um, and maybe psychology might give you ways of understanding people and ways of understanding how people learn and develop and grow, but um, things are missing from it. So for instance, like the whole value of being a parent, why it might be, why it might enrich your life, or um, what a good life looks like, um, might not be the kinds of things that psychology can just tell you. Um, um, so, I don't know. So it might be a rich and interesting question what um, psychology can do to shape parenting in good ways and whether that's very much at all. Um, I think Naomi's idea is that it has encroached on um, parenting and perverted it. Um, although to, to get a good sense of that, we could have um, some examples of what a better way of approaching parenting is such that it lacks um, this kind of psychologization. Um, so one point about the discourse of parenting is that it can be kind of smeared over many different actors and many different texts and publishers and points of information dissemination. You can find this um, this discourse um, in a meme, in a series of memes, in a Facebook page that um, publishes memes. You can find it in magazines. You can find it in tweets of um, people who are particularly interested in this, or tweets of just people who occasionally talk about this. And there'll just be a kind of pattern of the sorts of um, things that people upvote. Um, and across this, you might read a kind of an aggregated conception of parenting that ends up shaping how we think about it. Um, so you, um, here are some examples of ways in which parenting has been psychologized and professionalized. Um, one thought is that um, ordinary human behavior is translated into some kind of psychological jargon. Um, and an example could be that instead of a lively child, um, you think of someone as a hyperactive child. And you might see this as a symptom of ADHD. Um, now, if ADHD really is a thing and hyperactivity really is a symptom of uh, ADHD, then you might think that, well, we just, you know, we haven't translated anything. We've we've gotten a deeper and more accurate understanding, a more concise understanding. Um, but um, this might be one of the um, things that's just at, at, at dispute that um, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe a lively child is a, you know, a more, some people like a more better understanding of the way a child is. I don't know what the debate is to um, justify that idea. Um, so according to this, human action is, in psychology, human action is understood in terms of behavior and parenting dis discourse often gives us a causal scientific explanation and seeks clear answers. And parenting is often seen from a third person perspective from outside the parent-child relationship, from the perspective of, a, of an expert and maybe there is something to this idea that um, uh, suppose there's something valuable about being a parent or a child and having a, a special relationship with another person. Um, and the thought is that um, if you see yourself from a, a third person perspective outside of that relationship, it might affect the kind of relationship you have with that person. So, for instance, if you start to see them, if you start to see yourself as just one more parent in the world with another child, then you might start to think of your relationship as somehow less special um, 
or you perhaps might be less motivated by the kinds of ideas and ideals and values you see from within, within that relationship. Um, it's not obvious that this is true. Um, perhaps if you only see yourself within this relationship, you might overprivilege your relationship with your child too much and um, downgrade the importance of other people's relationships with their child. Um, but it, so it's interesting to think about this first personal and third personal perspective and what might it what it might mean, what changes it might introduce to your relationship with your child. Um, okay, but Pro Professor Stefan Reimakers, who often writes with Judith Sweeter, who made that previous point with him, writes, what defines a good educator or parent or grandparent is someone who um, appropriates that kind of knowledge and applies it accordingly, um, applies it accordingly. Someone who professionalizes oneself to a certain extent and who would who acts as an expert would, or more correctly, behaves as an expert would behave. Um, and the thought is that you just reduce yourself to someone who manages um, children's behaviour. So, um, so if you think this is the case, you I don't know. So if you think that there's a problem that's been kind of well explained here. You might wonder whether um, philosophy or some philosophers might have something interesting to say about it. Um, if you see children as being involved in an inter intergenerational relationship like Schleimacher does, in which parents have to judge how to introduce their children to the common world, um, then raising children is a political challenge. Um, right. Um, and philosophers of education like Raymakers and Naomi Hodgson and myself have argued that the discourse of parenting depoliticizes parents. It removes the political aspect of parenting. Um, parents are generally adults with values, ideals, and political agency. And it gives authority instead to experts and scientists to decide the best way to um, raise children. So here at the heart of their um, critique is an idea, of, is a kind of conjecture about where authority lies, it appropriately lies with parents. And in addition to that, there's a kind of um, uh, appropriate degree of flexibility and freedom to um, decide what to do with children on their behalf. Um, and it would be wrong to take this authority away. Now, it might be the case that, I mean, you could think that um, this is all true and that parents really do have this authority. But you could also combine it with the idea that um, parents can use that authority better or worse. Um, and so although it's up to them to decide how to parent, that doesn't mean there aren't better or worse standards of parenting. Um, and indeed, if they're going to pick one standard of parenting, maybe they should do it on the basis of reasons rather than flipping a coin, for instance. And perhaps it's the case that some experts or scientists or perhaps some other parents could advise them on what better kinds of parenting would look like. Um, but here, it's not just scientists, qua scientists that have the right views about you know, how parenting ought to be. Um, the more plausible view is, is that it's um, a set of ethical and moral considerations that scientists have no special um, access to. Um, and so it's a more, it's a less scientific debate um, than it might otherwise be. But that doesn't mean that sci psychology and science has nothing to add to the debate, or nothing, no ways to inform parents to appropriately use their appropriate authority. Um, <clears throat> uh, Hodgson wants to draw attention to existential questions. Um, the form of philosophical analysis, this form of philosophical analysis, involves a form of conceptual analysis. But it also involves thinking about how concepts, particular bodies of knowledge, um, become taken for granted as part of our ordinary language. It asks, what is human existence like? And what does drawing on these um, bodies of knowledge miss out? What does it deny? What does it narrow down? What does it include and make us not think about? 
um, so for Hodgson, she wants to go back to the human experience and ask whether or not these disciplines adequately capture it. And if they don't, she wants to explore um, these aspects of human existence and um, give due attention to them. Um, <clears throat> and she suggests that there are questions about knowledge, truth, reality and existence which are overlooked by um, too narrowly drawing on psychology and psychology as answering all the important questions we can have about raising children. Um, and so the thought is that some philosophical um, training and philosophical thoughts can um, uh, teach us to challenge what's taken for granted um, about ideas about ne human nature, ethics, freedom and democracy. Um, we, we, we can um, challenge these ideas, we can um, challenge assumptions about them when we think about them and think about how they correctly apply to our lives. So to summarise, current policy draws predominantly on psychology and neuropsychology when offering guidelines on how to raise children. Parents are seen as being in need of education or expected to seek advice from experts on how to raise their children. And this advice can be found in all sorts of places, including books, TV shows and so on. Um, but um, she thinks that while neuroscience might give us true theories about how brains develop, um, these findings don't add up to an account of how to raise children. Um, you know, causal claims might be made. If you do this, it achieves this result. But um, uh, there are more questions about what results should, we should be trying to achieve and whether we should be um, always thinking only about results. Um, we should be relating to our children differently than that, rather than just as technicians for bringing about desirable aims. Um, and so the uh, thought is that, um, you know, parenting discourse really ought to draw on a wider range of considerations and values than um, just scientific ones. Or at least this is um, how I interpret it. Okay, thank you very much for um, listening. And if you have any questions about this, you might email me or perhaps even consider even emailing uh, Naomi directly or reading some of her work about parenting.